Welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. You can get more information at the website svos.org. Our guest, Eva Gavrielov, is an abstract art on paper artist, and she creates a wide variety of two-dimensional and three-dimensional works of art on paper. So welcome, Eva. Thank you. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background. How did you become involved creating art? Um, I was trained as an architect uh, in Israel. I was brought up in Israel. And when I came to the US, I became a graphic designer. So I studied graphic design. And uh, I've always been uh, interested in art. I was drawing and painting. And, but I started doing it full time um, about 15 years ago. Um, and it's a dramatic change between doing commercial art, graphic oh, design, yes. and uh, doing uh, fine arts, which you do only for yourself, for your self-expression, for your pleasure. That's, uh, and that's how I, uh, I decided to become a full-time artist. I think I've always um, been interested in paper. I love paper. Paper has wonderful qualities. Um, and there's many ways, aside from drawing on it, you can uh, paint on it, you can print on it, you can build sculptures with it. So there's many ways and techniques to do stuff with paper. And that uh, at first <laughs> I thought I'm only a um, painter or screen, um, printmaker, but now I'm realized I'm more interested in the whole aspect of right. dealing with paper. So tell us a little bit about printmaking. What types uh, of tools do you use? So there are many techniques uh, and many ways and many kinds of printmaking, uh, starting with etching, uh, which is you etched into a copper plate or some metal plate. And then you somehow um, move the, you ink the plate and then you uh, transfer it to your paper. There is silk, silk screen. Oh, technique, which is... You brought a screen to show us about oh, that. thank you. Let's take a look at this. That's, that's a screen which you actually you... Um, it's a process, uh, as many of the printmaking techniques are involved with lights and with the light. Some of them are done in the dark room. In, in this case, you get your image by exposing this film, putting some light sensitive materials such as photo emulsion and then putting uh, your image on a film through the light and making uh, by different degrees of the emulsion and the uh, film exposed to light you get this image and the dark areas you can see are closed with the photo emulsion and the white or yellow areas are open and then when you take you can put your um, paint, you could put a big blob of paint and you take a squeegee and you just go like that and your piece of paper is under. So whatever is so with paint. the squeegee of whatever is, as you can see, this right. is see-through. You can see my fingers while well, this is not, not the same and the paint doesn't go through the dark area. So you really, you get the image of the, wow, um, cool. the yellow areas. So let's take a look oh. at some images of prints that you made using the silk screen. Sure. Um, so in this uh, image, I used, uh, I made little, on a film, I created a pattern of dots. As you can see, if you look closely, there's all kinds of dots, and the screen had dots. And when I pulled the squeegee through, uh, it shows various designs of dots in various forms. And I, I like to print in layers, which means that I have a couple of screens like the one you've seen. And one time I'll pull 
one color, like the orange, one time I'll pull the green one, and I print them one on top, on top of the other. I built them this way to create more depth in the image. So is that all one piece of paper? It's one piece of paper oh, it's which... not like a collage? No, it's one piece of paper which had uh, a screen pulled over it at least four times with wow. di different colors, the orange, the white, the pink, the gray, one on top of the other. Uh, and this is generally the way I work with prints. I uh, work in layers, sometimes of the same screen, and sometimes I have three or four screens that I use intermittently to go over the, the screen. Um, the colors are combination of warm and cold, and as you can see, uh, um, they are muted. They're not pink, hot, or bright red. I like more muted colors. Uh, so this looks interesting. Yeah, this one is again the same technique uh, of the dot. Some of the dots were handmade on the top part uh, by me using um, uh, some needle or sharp tool to make the holes in a paper and then create a screen image. And the bottom part is really um, computer manipulation of the dot pattern is computer produced. And mm. that's the other thing I like to combine sometimes Photoshop digital images and sometimes um, uh, just handmade images. Um, I like to al always leave a little white and a little uh, punch of a darker, like an accent or an, mm -hmm. m a different. So although my colors, as I mentioned before, are muted, they are, uh, I always have, like, I like to have like a punchline, if you right. will. Um, the, this one, is another silk screen, which is, uh, com in this image you can see the combination that I use uh, of different media because the pattern that you see here on the bottom in the gray is I actually took, I used the videotape of those, if you remember mm -hmm. the black videotapes, and I knitted it. Uh, and then I took a picture of the knit and I made it into a screen, while the upper part, the bigger, um, uh, pattern is another knitted form and here again you see the combination of knitted patterns that I made into silk screens and I print them in different layers. Each layer is in a different color and uh, wow. so there are many different techniques as many part of this techniques really including starting with knitting a thread or a video or paper and putting them on a the screen uh, and uh, including, um, I like also mixing different, for this image, I used red bright paper actually, while the print is actually red. And uh, I used the collage technique in which I turn the one image into two, giving a little valley or uh, between them just to create a depth or, but it's an image of a knitted form of uh, knitted videotape, the pattern that you see. That's really interesting. So you use light as a technique. Can you tell us a little bit about what a cyanotype is? Yes, a cyanotype is actually one of the older, I think of the first forms of photography. Mm -hmm. uh, or it's actually what in the old days in architecture you used blueprints. Right. That's also in a cyanotype actually. So in a cyanotype you take um, some other light sensitive emulsion, you, you put it on your paper and then you can put your film or your image or you can put an actual image like an, let's say an apple or you can put a, a film with your image, mm -hmm. expose it to the light either in the sun 
or in a light room, in a dark room, in a light mm -hmm. machine, light exposure machine. And then you get um, a negative of your image. And again, in areas that are covered, the light doesn't go through. When in areas that are open, the light will go through. What, once you wash the cyanotype, you'll get the dark blue. Cy that's why it's mm -hmm. called cyanotype, right. because of the blue. The dark blue are areas that have been uh, covered and the light didn't go through them, while the light ones are the ones that were had an image on them. Cool. Well, let's take a look at some more prints that you've made. Okay. Um, so in this image, um, again, we have a combination of uh, printing techniques as well as uh, not printing techniques. The upper and uh, lower dark parts are a monotype, which is called trace monotype, in which you spread ink, or in this case, uh, your oil paint, very thinly on, uh, on your plate. And then you can draw, in this one, I drew the little circles. You put a piece of paper on your oil paint, on your very thin oil paint, you draw a drawing and you lift it up, you get your drawing, which are oh, on the, the dark. opposite side. Yeah. And, and then the, the middle is um, very thin rice paper, which I went, I have a, a heat tool, a burner, in which I go and I punch little holes in the paper. Uh, you can either use it for patterns, to create patterns, or to uh, just go make uh, holes for to see the light through. And this is another, very similar to the previous one, but with red color. And in this one, I did create a pattern with my um, heat, heating tool. You see the square, the white square in the middle, and the uh, little dots on the sides, which are just the background. So I like mixing and matching, combining the medias. This is a pure cyanotype in which I had a film with the image and as you can see the light, uh, the, the white circles are, were black marks uh, while the blue areas were, n did not have any image and once you wash it out uh, you get whatever was drawn or dark as the white Interesting. Mark. It looks very similar to the one before it. Did Be you use the same type I of I used screen? the same piece of paper because mm -hmm. it was made on rice thin paper and I put it out in the sun and the light, because the rice paper is thin, the light went through the very thin pieces of paper and some, so you see the not so uh, even blue tones. Mm -hmm while the little circles had the drawing on it. So the middle is actually reflects the various ways that light went through the rice paper. Um, this is another example of uh, mixed media um, in which I took a little dental tape, I knitted a little knit, knit and I enlarged it to a large 22 by 30 um, image, I made it into a silk screen. I printed the silk screen. Wow. This is a little very uh, process and steps. But at the end of the, of the process, I got an orange, blue, uh, orange and red uh, form of a knit. And, what, and then I started cutting into the holes. Wow. So you like yeah, and, knit and, and then printed and then knit, photographed, printed. Yes. And this is the... Cut it again. That's with, pretty amazing. <laughs> yes, because I like the interplay or the conversion of, or transformation of paper into fabric, into paper. That's um, and I So you brought some tools for us to see. So how do you use this burning tool? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is... Um, uh, you plug it to the heat and that needle gets uh, a little warm. And then you take, in this case, I took an old book, uh, which is uh, Friends of the Library of Palo Alto sell <laughs> old books. And uh, if 
uh, you can do it at any paper. It doesn't have to be old books. But then you take and you, when you punch a hole through the paper, you get, you see the smoke, but you get, um, you get the burn mark and it creates a hole. So this way I make the holes. And in fact, you can see how the page looks after the holes have, be, have been punched through it. So it's um, nice to get the dark background as well as uh, the and what, hole. What and then I, I take the... my, um, uh, it's, I take an etching needle, which is just a sharp tool. I cut around the paper and the paper is very old because it's an old book, so it's very brittle and it's very thin. I could make a little something like that. So I make two of them or three of them or however many of them. And then I just glue them one to the other with a very high-tech glue, glue stick. stick. And um, I like that etching tool. That looks really cool. Yeah, just a sharp the, tip. Yeah, it's a, nice. just a sharp like a needle. And then you glue, you put a little uh, glue on each side of the, and you have this. And uh, once after a while, you get very uh, large piece and you glue them one by one wow. to the other. And this is again the idea. I like the idea of the recycling. The, the reason I do it and is because I like the. Um, uh, so as you can see, I brought lots, uh, of, them. lots of them just to show and you. And to make a bigger it, piece. It takes you must, many of them to, you to must get like to a doing big fine detail It's a little things. obsessive, <laughs> but uh, there's something very calming about it. And I like the idea of the old and the discarded, aside from the recycling, right. making um, transformation into something of beauty, of value. Uh, and I like the also changing the becoming a piece of art after being an old book. It just right. no, from the art. Transformation. Oh, art. Yes. Very... Yes. And also there's something a little more lace like or fabric again. Once they are all glued together, right. you can, they stop being a piece of paper. They, they become something dimensional within the realm of fabric, if you, right. I think. Plus, so they used to be words. They used to be words, and you get the words. You see the words, so it adds a little tone. And if you're very curious, you can look and see, try and understand what was uh, um, there. So that's the... Uh, and My what is burning this? tool. Yes. What is that? This is a um, piece. This is actually a knit, uh, a knitted piece of various materials that I needed, starting with the wire and some videotape and some paper. Um, and the interesting thing about the papers is that you can uh, um, knit paper. So wow. I brought a little tool called spindle here, and I'm going to demonstrate how I make this into uh, yarn. Wow, so you paper take yarn. Paper Very yarn, you and really take this. You must use a shredder a lot. Yeah, I shred <laughs> all these pieces of paper, and I, so you twist it like that, and it becomes really like yarn. And when you do it long enough, days, hours, days, months, you wow. get this little, you get it into being like a big bulk. So how of, long did this take, really? It took a long time. I don't know how, but it takes, um, you know, many, many, many hours to do it. And I wow. do it while I'm watching to, uh, listening to books on tape or music right. or, and then once you have the whole, um, um, yarn or the whole uh, looks almost looks like string. So yeah, yeah, like string. So you can knit that, or as another um, way, you can uh, just knit it as straight as it is with the um, paper, just paper, not twisting. And as you can see, there's a different way to the knit if it's knitted from straight pieces or if it's knitted from twisted more like yarn. And I also like to 
play with um, different make patterns with uh, the look of the straight shredded paper or the look of the twisted yarn. And um, uh, also when I don't use, so this is good for recycling uh, shopping bags like Whole Foods or Safeway bags, the brown right. stuff. Or in that, in some case, I did a large piece which I used old triple A maps. Oh, interesting. So this well, is. Uh, let's take a look at some of the images that you created using this wonderful knitting style. Okay. So this is um, actually one of the ones that I used the burning tool oh, yes, with the white rice paper, and I. Uh, this is not actually knitted. The, these are the ones in which uh, I burned them and cut them into circles like I demoed before and wow. uh, glued them one to the other in a very <laughs> meticulous and obsessive way. <laughs> and I like the way they, they you know, bend and yeah. uh, they do look like fabric to me, so which is... Uh, but they're the words. These are the words and the burn and the dark. Uh, is there a deeper meaning in the burned words? Uh, there is, but I'm, uh, I'm not. There is a meaning. <laughs> there are few meanings. Uh, I'm an avid reader, so I love to read. I love words. I love books. The first time I took a burning tool into a book, I thought <laughs> I will die on the spot. But. It did not happen, and I, uh, uh, I just uh, was happy that I could utilize the old books that otherwise would have been thrown away. This is another, this is a knit w in which I used all kinds of recycling shopping back. So the brown ones are, as I said, Safeways, and I know each one where it came from. Right. The, <laughs> the silver ones purple. are Christmas Nordstrom's. <laughs> well, you the... don't need to tell us all the stories. <laughs> and they're all variety of plastic, paper, and this is really a recycling one. In this, I used my old monotypes. So as, a, oh. as all artists know, we all have, we have pieces we discard or we don't like anymore. So, but you know, there's some emotion, you can't just throw them away. So you try to reuse them. So I shred them and then I sorted them according to their color and they, and then knitted them in different wow. um, really pieces and almost like quilted them together, except for the black, which is a videotape. And this is the triple A maps one again, which I knitted uh, and I added the blue, uh, I added the dark ones and the red ones just as accent because it was a project about maps and I thought that a map always has, you know, the map has a matter of scale from the large to the small one. So I felt like you needed some highlights to say that this is the, the point. Um, here is another a combination of uh, rice paper and uh, plain black and white Xerox papers off my printer, all the discards of the wow. various emails that we get every day. And I combined them because I like the different shades of the white. Um, another 3D piece is um, I thought I could uh, weave them. That's, so it's weaving, another form of working with paper. And in this piece I combined, uh, um, I made a sculpture by folding them in, and, and looping them into the knit. The upper part is a knitted and starched, uh, just pure, plain cotton thread. And I just weave them, the little cut the little shreds fold them in the middle and, and try to insert them into the... Gives it a lot of movement. It's Very a lot of nice. movement and everybody thinks it lo looks like a tutu, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just no, like the nice. way it reflects on the wall. And um, for this piece, my inspiration was, believe it or not, corrugated paper. And uh, 
the way I do this is by, uh, again, taking my old shredded um, monotypes. And you and brought an example I of brought it. an example of, uh, this is a sh you know, just a piece of shredded uh, paper. And the monotypes paper, printing papers, are, have a large percentage of um, cotton in them. So they are very thin, uh, thick, and you can, uh, they can get wet without. So I use the glue. I put the glue, glue I just glue it in spots, and then I twist it around, as you can see here. But because it's, um, the glue doesn't like to stay, so as you can see, I, I'm just, uh, I have to attach them with uh, uh, clothes pins. Otherwise, they'll, and I leave them there for a day, and then I make these. You glue more of them together. Glue two of them together in the middle with the, and then I attach them to one another. And once they're glued on both sides, they become very stiff. And the nice thing about it is you don't, if you look at just plain from the front, doesn't look like much, but when you twist them around, you see the color that was in the original print. So if you tilt so your head or. Creating you know, art from art. Art from art <laughs> and <laughs> dimension amazing. from. So before we go, tell us very briefly where people can see you in the Bay Area? Uh, well, I will be doing um, uh, open studios in, on May the 14th, and that will be in my home studio in Palo Alto, and it's in the book of the open studios. And then later in May, I'll have a show with the Cafe Baroni, Oh, which, nice. um, in Menlo Park? In Menlo Park, which is a very nice, uh, vibrant place, and he always likes to hang out, so that'll um, be another place to see my art. And um, at this time, I have my art showing in Berkeley, in, across from the Berkeley Rep. There's a big window of a commercial space mm -hmm. there, and I have some stuff hanging there. Oh, that's... Amazing. So you'll be in the Artist Directory in Palo Alto for the Silicon Valley Open Studios. Yes, Studios. I will. Excellent. Yes. Well, thank you so much thank for being you. part of Talk Art. Thank you very yes. much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.